I'm Perrin Desports, co-founder and partner here at Polaris. We help entrepreneurial dentists and other healthcare professionals build and exit successful group practices. Attracting, motivating, and retaining associates is the number one problem of every group practice. Whether you're two locations or 200 plus locations in size, we see so many emerging groups struggle in this area for two primary reasons. One, they're recruiting only when the need arises, meaning an associate quit or was fired. And two, their only way of attracting a candidate is with a compensation rate and a compensation rate only. Solving the problem of attracting and retaining associates requires a much more comprehensive solution. And that comprehensive solution typically begins and ends with creating certainty in the minds of the associate candidate himself or herself. And one of the most pivotal aspects of creating certainty is around partnership or ownership in the business. I believe that young candidates go to dental school because they're entrepreneurially minded and they've been told by a lot of their parents and other colleagues that in dentistry you still have the opportunity to to own your own business and i believe that to be true actually even in a group practice context one of the great ways to facilitate that in a group practice is through an earn in model an earned equity model there are two different methodologies. One's called restricted stock units and one's called profits interest units. We're gonna talk about profits interest units today. Profits interest units work really well in a group practice context where, you were, where you're trying to achieve ownership at a practice level. They also work really well in a de novo strategy, meaning a cold start, not an acquisition-based strategy, but one where you're finding the, the plot of dirt or, or the shell, you're investing in the build out and you're marketing the business to attract patient number one. You as the founder took all of the initial risk to make that happen. For that, there's a threshold of value to compensate you for the risk that you took. You shouldn't share in the ownership of the business when you took all the risk and the associate rode your coattails into it and didn't share in any of that. Now, if you wanna create an opportunity for them to become an owner in the business, that's great, it's worth doing, but it should only occur if they can help you increase the value far beyond that threshold to compensate you for the risk that you took. So the value that is created by the associate above the threshold is shared between you and them. There's some level of a split that happens. And this is laid out obviously in advance. So we all know how the game is played. On the other hand, if the associate shows up and doesn't help you create any additional value above the threshold, then they don't earn any equity. They don't earn any ownership in the business. They still get paid their normal clinical compensation rate but they don't become an owner. This is truly a performance-based ownership model. If they perform, they will earn equity in the business. If they don't, they'll get paid their clinical compensation, but they won't earn any equity in the business. So every practice, in this case, a, a startup, a, a, a de novo, has some baseline evaluation. And in this case, the baseline evaluation is calculated off of the revenue and EBITDA of the business with a certain valuation multiple to establish what that baseline is. That's the threshold of value that accrues to you as the founder for the risk that you took. We assume the revenue growth and EBITDA margin of the business is going to expand. That's what the associate is there to help you do, all right? So if they are not able to help you grow the top end of the business, the revenue, and if they're not able to help you expand the profitability of the business, then what value have they really created? Arguably none. But in this case, the model that we built for this particular client, we think that the associate will help us grow revenue 10% per year, and they're help, gonna help us expand the EBITDA margin 1% per year. 
and there's a maximum on the model. We don't think that the practice profitability can grow beyond 25% on an EBITDA threshold, and we think that due to capacity constraints, this is a business that can exceed about $6 million in total revenue at some point in the future. And we model these things out over about a 10 year period. Finally, we're gonna attach something called a vesting schedule to this particular model. That means that the associate, even if they blow the doors off, even if the associate um, exceeds wildly every threshold that we've put in front of them, they can't spike the football, turn around and leave after they cash out all the equity that they've created. The equity has, the ownership has a vesting schedule. In this case, it's five years. A vesting schedule is the equivalent of what you might have heard of called the golden handcuffs. And that means that they can leave anytime they want, but they forfeit any unvested shares. So it's a retention mechanism. You attract the associate to come work to you, work for you um, with the opportunity to become a partner, earn in to become a partner, and you retain them for the long haul with a vesting schedule. And in this scenario, everything I just shared, the, the revenue and, and profitability uh, expansion, um, everything beyond that original threshold is going to be split between the founders of this business. In this case, there were two founders and the one associate. So it's going to be the founders that share 67% and the associate shares 33% above and beyond that threshold. When we model these out, we have a baseline year, meaning the year that the associate comes into the business, the valuation of the business has been established with or without uh, his or her involvement. So there's no valuation change there. That's the value that's created without the associate's contribution. But like we said, if they're able to help us grow revenue of the business and do it in a profitable way over some period of time, in this case, 10 years, They've helped us create a much more profitable business, much greater revenue generation, and an altogether uh, wonderful outcome for all parties concerned as it relates to improved valuation in the business. And you can see that they've helped us take the valuation of the business from about $1.8 million that we created without them to almost $7.8 million in 10 years. They've helped us unlock an additional six million dollars worth of valuation that's a great op outcome for us as the two founders and it's a great outcome for them as the associate and prospective owner so here are our two founders they founded the business and when they built the business up to some initial level of valuation um, they created about 1.8 million dollars worth of value without the associate and over a longer period of time uh, that initial threshold remains theirs and theirs alone. The, the associate, on the other hand, came into the business. We allocated a certain amount of ownership in the business for them to realize if they generated uh, improvement in terms of valuation. You can see how it vests over a five-year period until it's fully vested at the end of five years and the amount of equity they were able to create for themselves along the way, creating more for us as well, is a pretty nice outcome at the end of a 10-year run. I would also remind you that the associate didn't take on any debt to create this outcome for himself or herself. They didn't take any initial risk of founding the business. So this is a pretty unbelievable outcome if they're able to help us achieve it. So how did the founders turn? How did, how did the founders do in in uh, this model that we uh, that we built? Well, like I said, they started out with a business valued at about 1.8 million dollars that they shared 50/50, and along the way, the associate came in and helped them improve their valuation position. The associate turned out really well, but in this case, the founders did too. So this is truly an opportunity where, at a practice level, and in this case, a de novo situation. We could not have built a business that valuable without a committed associate for the long haul. But for the associate to create that same level of outcome, he or she would have had to take on a phenomenal amount more risk, debt leverage to do it, 
and really replicate the business that we've built due to all of our secret sauce and years of, uh, of successful operation. This is the best of all worlds where the, the parties coming together can create something that's more valuable than any of them could achieve on their own in isolation. So if you've got questions about how to create a more comprehensive solution to attract a higher level of candidate, what a buy-in or earn-in model would look like for you or your business, or anything in general about how we work with our clients to create pathways to partnership, you can send me an email directly or book a call with one of us off the link in this description. And if you'd like to learn more about the services we offer our clients here at Polaris, you can find all of them along with a variety of free educational resources like our podcast on our website. And the URL is shown here along with my name and contact information if you'd like to reach out to me directly. I really appreciate you joining me for the video today. I hope you found it to be highly educational.